Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and I'm back with another video. So in this video we are going to talk about endgames where we have two pawns. So previously we already covered uh, pawn endgames, but in, in those we had only one pawn on white side. Uh, and uh, here we have two pawns. So previously I taught you about key squares, about the rule of the square, and essentially uh, you could win uh, with one pawn. And as you might imagine, winning with two pawns is much easier. But I will show you in this video a couple of examples where actually you have to some tricky positions where you have to watch out and some uh, uh, things that you should probably know when you have two pawns. So uh, actually there are fairly a uh, small amount of uh, end games where, which are uh, drawn for black in this case when white has two pawns, but I'm going to show you also those examples. Uh, here, for example, we have a famous setup of two pawns, which are guarding each other. So this pawn is guarding the pawn on a7, and now uh, these pawns are actually protected. And why is that? Because, for example, if a king comes to b7 and tries to capture on b6, this a pawn can easily go to a queen. It uh, doesn't matter if we are talking about position where they are b4 and a5, the same thing applies. So, okay, the natural moves here are king to b4 and black can play king to b7, king to a8. Other moves doesn't make, don't make sense. So now, uh, essentially, okay, we can play king to b5. And now if he goes to a8, playing king to c6 or king to a6 uh, ends in a stalemate for black. And this is something we don't want to do, actually. So uh, we want to uh, prevent this in a way. So by playing uh, here... Uh, okay, king to a8, king to c5 first, uh, we wait for white so that it goes out of the out of the corner and now we promote to a queen. We need to sacrifice one pawn in order to win this game. And uh, of course he needs to capture it and now by playing king to c6 we are in this diagonal opposition, also opposition one of the key elements in the pawn endgame. And now when he goes to b8 we just push b7 and this is something you already seen previously. Uh, easy win with a queen in the end. Okay, so let's go to the other position. Here we have uh, pawns which aren't connected. Uh, there are two pawns, but uh, they are on the same line. Uh, sometimes showing weakness uh, in the middle game, but in the end game quite useful. But this is also one of the situations uh, where you want to watch out. So for example, white pl plays here b7 like the only logical move. And uh, king to a7, now you don't want to rush and play king to c7 because it also ends in a stalemate for black. Uh, well, once again, sacrifice the pawn. So when you sacrifice the pawn, play king to b6, now in your uh, black, putting black into the position, he to move a8 to c8, also one of the position uh, I shown previously in the end games with the pawns. With the pawns. And now this is also easily winnable with white. Okay, and one last position of those like pretty simple positions where you want to watch out. Now here, uh, as we can see, these pawns aren't connected and uh, white king is far away. But there is a way actually to defend this pawn. So black is threatening to come to f5 and pick up the pawn. And he is in front of this pawn and this is a drawn endgame. But if we play g4, he cannot come directly to f5. If he plays king to f4, then we just go g6, and uh, this pawn will promote to a queen. So he needs to go around, and uh, this gives our king enough time to come to f4 and, yeah, essentially win the game. Of course, this is a situation where the black king is uh, in front of the pawn, but let me just show you quickly that with this g4 pawn we will have a necessary tempo to win this game. So let me just quickly go through these moves since uh, we've already covered this. Uh, okay, play like this. And now g5, the necessary tempo. And of course, not again king to f7. Definitely a big no-no here. And uh, we want to sacrifice this in the previous position and just repeat the same thing. Okay, and this is, as I've said previously, you get out a queen and you checkmate the black king. Let's move on to this position where we actually have two pawns, but they are not connected now. So there is actually one line that separates them. And why am I drawing this line? So this is a very important thing in situations when you have these two pawns. 
because now that means that they are actually protecting each other. If, for example, this pawn would be on e4, then there would be two lines, and uh, that would mean actually that those pawns don't protect each other. So this is very fortunate position for white, and this is why I'm actually showing it to you, because now by playing h5, uh, this king uh, cannot approach this pawn easily. So g5 is protected by uh, this pawn, uh, g6 is protected by this pawn, so he needs to go around to actually come to this pawn. And of course he cannot capture on f4 because h6, h7, h8, and that's a queen. So let's get back to this position and let me just show you that instead of drawing everything. So a natural move for white here is, uh, okay, king to f6 first, natural move for black, now king to g2, and if he comes to g7, uh, f5. So in a way we are back to initial position. So if the black comes closer to one of these pawns, we just push the other pawn and that way they are protecting each other. Okay, so, but also, uh, if for example, in this situation, uh, black would be first to move, then of course they are not protecting each other because black can just pick up the pawn and go to the other pawn and pick, it, pick him up as well because the white king is far away. But also one thing I wanted to show you in this position is that these two pawns uh, actually, uh, with their squares, uh, they work together. And if this square with the base on the fifth rank, uh, it comes only to the seventh rank. But if, if, if it would come to the eighth rank, that means that actually those two pawns can win without the help of the king. I will also show you that. So uh, f6, king h7, king to uh, g, g3. So if, uh, for example, black here plays uh, king to g8, we now have this square which goes to the eighth rank. And now doesn't matter where uh, white plays, we just push the pawn on the other side and he goes to a queen. But uh, let's say for example that uh, black doesn't play to g8, he plays on h6, then we just bring the king up and in the end we will win the game easily. Okay, so this is one of the positions which I wanted to show you. So we have two pawns, one line between them. I will also show you later with two lines. Uh, let's go to the next position. Here uh, we have a situation where black is first to move and uh, as I've said uh, we have those two pawns with uh, one line between them but now uh, actually this doesn't work because the king can go from the side and actually he can manage to go to one of the uh, key squares of this pawn. So here on c7 for example in this position. Uh, so I will try to go through some of the variations in the future faster if we cover them in the previous videos. Um, so this doesn't work, actually the drawing move for black here is king to e5, put him into the opposition. So now in a sense uh, black doesn't, uh, white doesn't have want to move with the king. Uh, if he moves here, we capture this. If he moves here, we capture this. Uh, and if he moves the pawn, we just capture the pawn. And in the end, now, since it is a one mo move more for black, uh, he can reach uh, this uh, critical square and essentially draw this endgame. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next position. So here, as I've said, we have a situation where there are actually two lines. Uh, between these two pawns and that means they are not guarding each other. So what we do, we just approach the one which is nearest to the king and now, uh, okay, let me just show you a situation if black doesn't care about the pawns and he just moves the king. So again, natural moves and white manages to come to the critical square. So okay, this is the first situation and uh, one which is probably more uh, more interesting for you is one where black plays e4 and now we don't capture so they are not guarding each other but of course we will not capture this one and because this is just a pawn uh, for black we will go king to g6 and if you notice from the previous situation we can come closer to the pawn there isn't a pawn on f4 for example which would be guarding uh, the g3 square and then we would have to go around this way uh, this pawn is uh, far away and we can come closer to him. Uh, okay, so now in this situation uh, h4 doesn't work because we just capture it and we, we are in the square of this pawn. We will capture him. 
as you can see. Uh, other other ideas like e6 also doesn't work. We will just come nearer and yeah, we are again in the square of this pawn. So other logical move is to play the king here. But now we'll just play the king here. We will pick up this pawn. And uh, for black, unfortunately, this is a rook pawn. And this is a drawn endgame because, sorry for that, uh, uh, the king just comes to h1 and h2. Uh, doesn't really matter. And he can play g1, h1. And in the end, it will be a drawn endgame. So, okay. One last position for today. Uh, besides, of course, the examples which you can try to solve. And this one, which we act where we actually have three lines between the two pawns. So I just wanted to show you that three lines and more are actually winning uh, for the side which has, which has the pawns. Uh, probably the most resilient uh, here move is king to c3. But let me just show you if he, for example, plays something else. So once again, king to b3. And uh, okay, so essentially when a king moves to one of the pawns, you just push the other. In this case, of course, he cannot capture because this is a queen. And uh, if he goes back, so to e4, king to c4, we just push the other. And essentially we are in the same position as in the beginning. These pawns are protect protecting each other. The same thing would go if he goes to d3, we just push a4. Okay, so the resilient move now, king to c3, we just bring up the king. And uh, okay, he goes back, we go like this, and essentially all other situations end up in black losing the game. Okay, so I won't show you this any further. Uh, as I said, I just want to show you that if you have three or more lines uh, between uh, the two pawns, they are actually protecting each other, and this is easy win for the side which has the pawns. So let's move on to the examples where which you can try and solve. Uh, okay, so this is the first position. And uh, this is the second position. As previously, uh, try and solve the situations. This one is uh, specifically very interesting. So write a few lines in the comments down below. Uh, write what do you think. So is white winning? Is 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 it a drawn endgame? And of course, if you need help, you can just ping me, uh, write a comment, or message me. I will be glad to help you. Uh, so. Uh, that being said, I'm, uh, I would like to thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.